We are going to make these really cute dessert cups. Now, I am doing a lot more than you might actually need to, okay? So I'm making homemade brownies and I'm making homemade chocolate pudding. You do not have to do that. But also, if you're interested in homemaking everything, I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. If you wanna see the end result and you just wanna make this a little bit easier on yourself, you can skip ahead a little bit in the video and it's gonna show you the assembly process and what that's gonna look like. Okay, we are starting with an eight by eight baking dish and I'm going to spray this. Oh, that one ran out. We have a new one. I'm also adding in parchment paper, so we are really gonna make sure these don't stick. And I'm gonna spray the parchment paper. So this should lift right out after we kind of um, lift the edges. All right, so that's ready to go. We can set that to the side and start getting our mixture together. We need one and a half cups of sugar. I do use a very coarse sugar. It's the Wholesome brand. So I don't know that that matters, but I just thought it was worth mentioning. And then you guys know, so we need to add another half cup. If, you, if this is not your first time here, then you know I always sift all of our dry ingredients through something like this to make sure there's no clumps. I cannot stand when you when you bake something and then you bite into it and you get like a, a bite of baking soda or baking powder or something like that. Ugh, it ruins the whole thing. So I always just try and sift through with something like this. We're going to add in three fourths of a cup of flour. We need two thirds cup of cocoa powder. So this is a regular thing used in our household. One thing that we make a lot with cocoa powder is homemade hot chocolate, especially when it's cold outside. It's not cold right now. But I also make um, homemade marshmallows and they are so delicious. I think I've made those here on my channel. We need a half cup of powdered sugar. This is one you wanna sift for sure because it does get a little clumpy. Add that in. And then I'm also adding in about three fourths of a teaspoon of salt. We'll add in chocolate chips to this as well. But I'm just going to kind of sift through this before adding in those chocolate chips. Making sure we don't have any large clumps and I can see lots of them. So you, that's why I do this because hang on, let me, let me give you a close up here. See, this is exactly what I'm talking about. That is why we do this process. Now, I don't get rid of those. You just keep doing this and it wears them down. Let me grab a spoon and just make sure we have a good mix here. And it looks like we do, this is awesome. So we're going to get out another bowl and um, add in the wet ingredients. I didn't get eggs out because I thought, oh, well there's some over there. And I didn't think about the fact that I actually hard boiled those today. I've been in the kitchen pretty much all day long, so starting to lose my mind a little. Okay, so we've got two eggs. I'm gonna whisk those. Also, you know what I just realized? I didn't preheat the oven. So I just did that right now. The oven needs to preheat to 325. Let's whisk these eggs. I'm going to add in two tablespoons of milk. You can use water, it's totally fine. This is just one of those adjustments that we make along the way. And then we are going to add in a half cup of, what's it called? Losing it, been in the kitchen too long, coconut oil. All right, this is slightly melted and it's unfortunately, I didn't leave the eggs out before I poured this in, which means it's going to start to harden back up pretty quickly. Now, feel free to use a vegetable oil or something like that. I love, love, love coconut oil in baking. I think it just adds this really great flavor. I'm also adding in about a half teaspoon of almond extract. If you are not a fan of almond extract, that's okay. Just use uh, vanilla extract. I really should have let the eggs <laughs> cool. It's okay um, because I've done it like this before, but I, not cool. Come to room temperature before putting them in here. So now we're gonna combine all of this together. You don't have to mix it like a lot. You really just are trying to combine your ingredients. I am currently also remaking a pasta salad that I made in my pasta salad video because it's just the pasta salad that we love so much. If you want to see 
the best pasta salads. You need to go and watch my pasta salad video because it is so good. So I'm remaking the BLT one to go at dinner tonight because we just genuinely love it so much. Okay, so that is combined. So let's add in some chocolate chips. Add in however many you want. I never measure chocolate chips. This one, I mean, you guys know I don't measure a lot of stuff, but this one is completely measured with the heart. And then I'm gonna save a few because I like to put some on top of yogurt sometimes. So I gotta have a little bit left for myself. Okay, this is going to be a nice thick recipe. So don't be alarmed, that is okay. And it's going to go into the pan. Not the pan, this is called a baking dish. It's gonna go into the baking dish. Now I'm gonna attempt to spread it out a bit. It's, it's a little difficult to do that part because the batter is so thick. I mean, it's a very thick batter. Um, but when it kind of melts in the oven, once it starts to melt in the oven, it spreads out as well. So you don't have to worry about it too much. Oh, I also should have said, these are gonna bake for in between like 40 and 40. These are gonna, go on, go on, go on. These are gonna bake for in between 40 and 45 minutes once we reach that 325. These brownies are so good. It's literally hard for me to wait for them to come out of the oven. Now we're gonna make the homemade chocolate pudding. And for this recipe, I prefer to have everything prepped and ready to go. I do feel like it makes it a little bit easier if you've got everything already divided out. So let's start with that. We are going to pull one third cup of cocoa powder, one half cup of sugar. Overall, we're gonna need two cups of milk, but you need it divided. So we're gonna do one and a half cups here in this measuring cup and then I'll do another half cup in this one just making it really easy on myself and yes it does take more dishes but you know I think it's easier this way you need four teaspoons of cornstarch now we use tapioca flour or arrowroot flour instead of cornstarch but feel free to use whichever one you normally use that's fine I'm gonna go ahead and just put that in a bowl so it's ready to go we need three egg yolks. So I'm going to separate out the whites. We can use that for something else. Whisk these. We need about a tablespoon of butter and it needs to be softened. So I went ahead and pulled that out. We'll just set it to the side so it'll be good to go. And again, I'm gonna be using almond extract. Feel free to use vanilla extract. Another one, let me tell you, this is gonna sound weird, but it's so good pistachio extract, if you can find it, is so delicious in this. Okay, now the majority of this is gonna be done over on the stove, but let me just go ahead and start adding ingredients here into our saucepan. So we're gonna add in that one third cup of cocoa powder, as well as the half cup of sugar. And then we're gonna add in the one and a half cups of milk and just stir the mixture together. And you you might have to stir for a minute just depending on your cocoa powder because you know, sometimes it'll kind of just sit on the top and it doesn't want to incorporate, but I promise it will. You just have to continue to mix and it will happen. Make sure you really get in the corners of your saucepan or you're gonna have cocoa powder in the corners like I just did. So we're gonna take this over, medium high heat, bring it to a simmer. The brownies just came out of the oven and they smell so delicious, I cannot wait. The thing about this part is you do have to pretty much stir constantly, but it's gonna come to a simmer pretty quick, so it doesn't take too long. We do need to keep that stirring constantly, so I'm going back and forth really quick, but I wanna show you real quick what we're gonna add to this bowl so that we can, we can be back and forth. We're gonna whisk together that other one half cup of milk, the egg, and the cornstarch. Whisk it together until it's completely combined, um, but you can see it's combining really well and really easily, but I'm gonna take this over to the stove so that um, I can stir real quick. I, I completely forgot to add in a pinch of salt to this. We have the simmer over here, so we're gonna actually take it over back to where the other bowl is. All right, so we have the simmer and what we wanna do is slowly add this into the bowl while we whisk. I need to switch hands because I am a righty and that's not gonna work. While we whisk, so we're gonna whisk the entire time, whisking constantly, adding this in, not cooking our eggs. 
also trying to not get it all over my shirt. All right, so now it is all incorporated. We're gonna transfer this back to the saucepan. Take this back over to the heat and bring it up to a boil, again, stirring constantly. Now we want this to come to a full boil and then we'll reduce it to a simmer. I can feel it thickening a lot. Um, and I've got a bit of a boil underneath there. You can barely see it. I don't want it to curdle or anything. So I'm gonna turn this down to a simmer and just let this continue thickening for about two to three minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my heat off and take this back over to the countertop. We're going to add in that touch of almond extract, but like I said, feel free to use vanilla. It's completely fine. And we're also gonna stir in the rest of our chocolate chips here. I said I was gonna save them for my yogurts and I forgot about this, so we'll just have to get some more. Um, you might wanna use more chocolate chips than that though, but as you could see, that was all I had left. Okay, we'll stir these in. They will melt pretty quickly. And then we need to add in that butter. So we're gonna stir that in, oh man, so good. But you do wanna cover it, so put it in something and then cover it because it will form that skin on the top, so you want it to be covered. Now I'm gonna let it cool just a little bit, and because of the use that I plan for this, I'm actually gonna put it into a baggie, um, like, a, like a Ziploc baggie. I'm using, I'm gonna put it into a baggie so that we can use that baggie later on for piping purposes. Now I made all of this today, but actually when I assemble these desserts, it's gonna be tomorrow. So feel free to make all of this stuff ahead of time. You don't have to make it day of. In fact, it's probably easier to make all of this the day before. You do want this to set though for about four hours up to overnight. I'm choosing overnight. It is five o'clock. I mean, technically, I guess I could eat this at nine o'clock tonight, but we'll just eat some tomorrow. Everything is made, so now we just need to do the assembly part. The brownies are done, they are so good, and I only know that because I may have tried a piece from it last night. You know, that's what happens. This discussion here on my channel, but leave the comment below. Are you in brownie edge or a brownie middle person? If you are a brownie edge person and you really like, okay, this is making a lot of noise, hang on. If you're a brownie edge person and you really like that crunch on the edge of the brownie, for some reason, the coconut oil almost makes a crunch like the whole way around. So you're gonna get it on the edges, but also on the top. Can you hear that? I think it's the coconut oil that does that because when I've made it without coconut oil before, it's not like that. Okay, so we're gonna take this whole thing out and we are gonna cut this into much smaller pieces than what we normally would if you were gonna be serving brownies. But we're cutting like bite-sized pieces almost, okay? So we're making them much smaller than what we normally would. Although maybe you normally cut your brownies this small. Also, you can see the edges kind of like crumbling. So that's what I was talking about. If, you, if you're that brownie edge person, that's what you like. All right, so I'm not gonna cut all of these just enough that we can make the parfaits that we're going to be making. Let me get out the cups. Y'all have to see this, y'all. Oh my gosh, it's so good, it's so good. So we made the chocolate pudding yesterday, that's ready to go. We're gonna cut a bit off the corner so we can pipe it into these cups. You can use plastic cups or whatever you happen to have, but these are like the perfect size for what I'm trying to do. And then I'm going to pipe a bit into each cup, hoping I don't make a huge mess. Add some brownies, <laughs> y'all. Okay. All right, I might run out of raspberries. I told, I told the family they were for a recipe and then I came in and you know, you know how it goes. So you can add a lot more raspberries than I'm going to, but I wanna make sure we have some for garnish. Now I'm gonna add another layer of the pudding. And this is where I say it would look a lot prettier if your pudding was a little bit thicker, but we don't mind the consistency of this one. So a little bit more because you're, if your pudding is a little thicker, you're gonna get more layers, okay? And then you add another layer of the brownie. Also, if you don't like raspberries, you could use strawberries. I love raspberries and chocolate together. 
And I'm not even like a really huge chocolate fan, but there's something about raspberries and chocolate. And then more raspberries on the top. And these are good to go. All right, obviously friends, we know it's gonna be delicious, but it's worth giving a try. That is decadent. You get a little bit of raspberry in that bite. Whoa. It also doesn't feel overly heavy because you have the pudding in there and you have the raspberry. <laughs> this is so good. Oh man, this is so good. My family is going to love this. This is one of the easiest little summer desserts that you can make. You can make a bunch of them all at one time, or if you just have one kid and you, or one adult, <laughs> that you just wanna make a little bit for, you can just make a little bit at a time as well. So these are ones that you can pre-make and put them into a big, nice blender and store that, and then you can have it available. You can also make the cups really cute looking. I'm gonna be making a half size recipe of both of these because we wanna make two separate ones just to show you guys. So I am just using some regular vanilla ice cream and we're gonna use about a fourth cup for this specific recipe. But if you want to make more than I'm making, then you would want to use about a half cup. So obviously you can measure if you want. You might also wanna let your ice cream just sit out for a second. Um, unless you haven't done your workout for the day and then uh, you can do it like I'm doing. All right, so about a fourth cup. That's probably about it. Also a little tip for this. If you're going to buy the cans of pineapple juice, I do like to get these small ones. They come in a six pack. And the reason I like to do that is because then I feel like we have less waste because I'm not opening a big can of pineapple juice with you know nothing to do with the rest of it. So this is a six ounce can. We're gonna use half of it right in here. And a little bit more. All right, that's about half. And then for this first one, we are going to do peaches and you want them to be frozen. So you can either buy frozen peaches or you can um, buy some peaches and freeze them. So we need about a cup of peaches and I think that's gonna finish off this bag. Yep, perfect. And then we're just gonna blend this together really well. That's it, it's so simple. All right, so if you've ever been to Disney, this is like your Disney Dole Whip, but we're making different flavors. So you just pour right into a cup. You can also use like a piping bag if you wanna make it really pretty, especially if you're, um, what is it called? This is gonna make a mess. If you're, oh man. Don't worry about me, just making a big old mess. If you have leftover peaches, one on the side of the cup would be really nice to do. I used the last of the peaches. Didn't really think that one through, but we're gonna do that with the strawberry one coming up next. So good, so refreshing, so simple to make. I mean, could this be any easier? And it's really fun too, especially the strawberry one because you can add the things on the side of the cup. On this one, you could add a pineapple on the side of the cup or a sliced peach, or I mean, you can add whatever you want but you can make the cups look really fun and pretty, especially if you got some colorful straws. Imagine them all lined up on a tray. It would be so neat. All right, for this next one, I'm gonna pour my pineapple juice over some ice just to make sure that it gets nice and cold. Plus, I don't think my uh, strawberries are all the way frozen, so this might help just if this is a little bit colder. All right, my strawberries are definitely not all the way frozen, but you'll get the idea. Now I wanna go ahead and prep one of them to go on the side of the cup. So we're just going to cut a little, um, kind of like a, an X or a cross into it and just set that to the side. For these other ones, I'm just gonna cut off the leaves and then drop them into the cup. Um, ideally, you do want these to be frozen and you need, it, for the size that I'm making, you need about a cup of strawberries. That's what you were drinking when you took a picture with a stormtrooper? Mm-hmm. Like Oh yeah, 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 when we were there. All right, so again, we've got some strawberries in there, about a fourth cup of ice cream, vanilla ice cream, and we're just going to add in the pineapple juice. I don't need the ice, just the pineapple juice. 
and it should be nice and cold now. I mean, you could always put your pineapple juice in the freezer for a couple of minutes, or you could store it in the refrigerator. That would have been a smart one for me to do. So we're gonna put the lid on this and just blend it together. Same process. Maybe I can get this one to come out a little better. Ah, nice. Now, if your strawberries are more frozen, you can pipe this. So it'll be more of a um, frozen yogurt consistency, you know, like when you get it out of the frozer, frozen yogurt machine. But you can also just put this in the freezer for a couple of minutes and you're gonna get the same effect. Then we can just take our strawberry. I have a slurper to the side here. Take our strawberry, put it on the side, and you've got your strawberry Dole Whip. I mean, how easy was that? That one's really good. But I do think if you pop it in the freezer for maybe 10 minutes or so, that consistency is gonna even be more, or if your strawberries are completely frozen, it's gonna be more like that Dole Whip consistency but so easy to make. And I mean, look how cute these would be just all served on some sort of tray or table for a summer dessert. It's That's good, right? That is good. <laughs> da, da, da. We are gonna make somewhat of an ice box cake. It's kind of similar to that. It doesn't have ice cream in it though, so a little bit different. We're starting with some heavy cream and I'm going to add one and a half cups of that to my mixing bowl because we're basically going to make, oh, let me open another one. We're basically going to make whipped cream out of it, okay? So I am, I've got just under a cup in that one. Fortunately, I thought ahead. Aren't you guys so proud? I thought ahead and got another one because I knew I had it, but I wasn't sure I had enough. All right, so there's one, and we're going to add another half cup. And we're going to take one half cup of powdered sugar and add it to this. And we're basically going to just whisk this together. So I'm using my whisk attachment. You can just use a handheld mixer, that's completely fine. Um, but we're just gonna whisk this together until it forms stiff peaks. So I'm starting slow to incorporate that powdered sugar and then we will kick it up because we want this to really mix. All right, so you know that you have stiff peaks when you basically, it will hold together, okay? So we've got it held together. I'm just gonna set this to the side for a second and move on to our next step. I tried to talk to you guys about this process well, that was going on and that was a terrible idea because it was very loud. We are going to add one fourth cup of powdered sugar to this eight ounces of softened or like room temperature cream cheese. And we're gonna mix that together using our hand mixer. You could use your stand mixer, that's totally fine, but obviously right now mine has whipped cream in it. So we're just gonna use the hand mixer. And every single time I look down in this cabinet, I think I should probably just get rid of the hand mixer because I feel like I don't use it that much. And then I remember how much I actually do use it. I love my KitchenAid mixer, but for some reason, this does seem convenient at times. All right, we're gonna mix this together. I'm gonna be very careful. Did I get you? All right, we just wanna do that until it's nice and smooth. Ooh, can I look at what I can I it? Let's take our whipped cream. And I'm gonna take half of the whipped cream and add it in. And we're gonna mix that together. All right, now we're gonna take the rest of the whipped cream that is in this bowl and we're, we're gonna add it in, but we're just gonna fold it together, okay? We're not gonna use our mixer this time. This is one of those, those desserts that Although you can make it ahead of time, I wouldn't make it days ahead of time, okay? I would make it a couple hours ahead, maybe the night before. And there's gonna be berries that go on the top. I would probably, if you're making it the night before, honestly, I would probably even add the berries, like 
the day you're serving it because the well the whipped cream over time will kind of start to separate if you don't you know like you don't want to eat this four days after you make it it's just not going to look as pretty set that to the side let me clean some stuff up so i have an eight by eight baking dish here and i've also got these honey graham crackers i think you can use whatever kind of graham crackers you want but you're going to need about two sleeves maybe not all of two sleeves but we'll have two sleeves available and then here you can have that last cracker so let's take some of our mixture and you need about a little under a cup. We're gonna spread it all around the bottom of the pan here. This actually, I probably should get out one of my smaller things. Yeah, that's much easier. We're going to start adding some graham crackers. We're gonna add a whole layer. I'm gonna add a whole layer here of graham crackers and I'm gonna try and make sure it covers the whole thing, okay? So you might have to end up breaking a little. Let's see. All right. So pretty good there. Now let's add another layer onto the top and spread that around. And we're just going to repeat. So we're going to, we're going to basically do this until we run out of the mixture that we made. We're going to do the same thing, just create another layer. But I am going to go opposite of the previous layer. So I'm not going to lay the exact same way. I probably should have broken off the corners so I could get these in there a little better. Oh, look, this layer is fitting better. Awesome. My daughter is in a play tonight. So we are at home while she is having what's called tech day, where they get everything squared away and ready for the performance tonight. So my son and I have been doing school all day, um, finishing that up. We are almost done for the year. So close. Five lessons of math left to do. It's all we gotta do. And I cannot wait for summer. Hey, finish your math. Come on, man, you're so close. So crazy close. Last layer, we're gonna take all the rest and it's gonna go on the top here. That's the last layer. Just wait and see, wait and see. So my mom always used to sing, have patience, have patience. Don't be in such a hurry. You don't like that one? No, not at all. All right, I probably could have actually started with this so that this part would be ready to go, but, but I didn't. All right, so we're going to just cut up some strawberries. We want to, them to just be kind of in little slices. You can actually slice them if you want. Oh, I have a strawberry slicer that I always forget about. Too late now. I mean, it's not really, but you know. So you can garnish with as many strawberries and blueberries as you want. This one is so perfect for like 4th of July, a get together or a Memorial Day get together because I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's like this where you guys live, but definitely at this time of year, strawberries and blueberries are in abundance. So we really can get them easily. Now we're just gonna put strawberries and blueberries all over the top. This is just gonna go in the refrigerator for about two hours before you serve, and then it's ready to go. I mean, so simple, but so tasty. We'll take it out and we'll serve it up in just a bit. All right, let's give this a try. That is delicious. That is so good. I made this yesterday and left it in the fridge. You know, it's supposed to be refrigerated for like two hours. I completely forgot that I made it. This is so good. You definitely should try this. The graham crackers soften up so they almost become cake-like. You have that cream cheese whipped cream, so good. This one is a winner. Our verse today comes from Colossians 3.12. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you wanna see more just like this, I have several videos here on my channel that you are going to love. If you need more inspiration, check out the different playlists and check out the video that I have above for more encouragement and inspiration in the kitchen.